So let's go ahead and submit the payroll. And so now we've got this item. We got a survey. I'm not going to do the survey. No survey right now and not using direct deposit. So if you have direct deposit, then you can set up the direct deposit. Otherwise, we're going to be entering the check numbers into the system. I'm going to let it autofill the check numbers. So autofill the check numbers, enter a start check number greater than zero. I'll leave that be for now. Let's take a look at the pay stubs. Now, remember from an HR perspective, we generally have to give the employees a pay stub in some way, shape or form, because we have to tell them not only that they got a net check, but what we took out of their check. So this is, you know, so, so if you have an electronic transfer, you'd still need to give them this information and notice what we have here. We've got the current and the year to date. So this is the, the salary current and year to date. They're the same right now. Obviously they would be different if it wasn't the first pay period. Social security, uh, federal income tax, Medicare taken out. They've got the summary current year to date on the right. And we have that for both of our employees. So that looks good. I'm going to close that back up and let's go ahead and finish this out. So I'll say finish payroll and then let's make sure taxes got paid on time. Most small businesses pay taxes every month. So set up taxes now and I'm going to say that we'll do it later. I'll do it later for the practice problem purposes. Obviously that when you're going to have to pay the taxes will be partially in dependent on the company themselves. And you might have uh, different requirements for when or how often or how far after the payroll you have to actually be paying the, the taxes. So let's take a look at that now as we see the impacts. A lot of the times the first thing I like to look at is the actual check register. So we can find that in the accounting and then the chart of accounts. And if you're in the business view, by the way, it would be the chart of accounts is in the, the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts under the manage. And then in the chart of accounts, I'm going to select the check register to see where those checks that were uh, created. Here are the two paychecks that were created. Now I, it didn't apply the check number for whatever reason. I tried to autofill the check number in there. So I'm going to go in and add the check number if I can. Let's try to edit. Let's try to edit Adams first. I'm going to go into Adam and then let's edit. And I'm going to try to give Adam a check number here and I'm going to call it uh, 101012 because when I do the bank reconciliations, I'm going to have a check number on it. And so I'd like to tie that out. It's not a big deal, but I'd like to do that if I could. So I'm going to save that and then I'm going to go back into the hamburger up top and we're going to go back into the accounting on the left hand side, the chart of accounts again. I'm going to go into the register and just try to add the other check number to Erica. Erica, edit that one. And this is going to be, I'm going to say 1013. All right. So not a big deal if you don't have that, but it'll make it a little bit easier to tie out on the bank reconciliation. So if I go back down into the accounting and we go into the chart of accounts and open up the cash there they are okay then let's take a look at the impact on the financial statements if i go to the balance sheet we're going to say what's going to happen from this well obviously the checking account went down so cash is going to go down we generated however many checks we have employees when we processed them there's our two checks obviously these amounts are the net check they're not the full uh, payroll that was received in terms of gross pay on the income statement if i go to the income statement and refresh it, run it to refresh it. Then we have down here the wages. And if you don't like wages, you could change the, the, the name of the account possibly to like payroll or, or whatever you want to call it. But we've got the uh, 698333. Those are the gross wages that were that, that were earned before we took out the, the taxes from them, the withholdings. And so there is that. And then we also had our taxes as the employer that we had to pay over and above the payroll taxes. This is our kind of matching portion for the way the payroll taxes are set up, Social Security and Medicare. And we're going to have a liability back to the balance sheet. We have a liability down here. 
for those taxes. So we've got them down here. Now, they grouped them in these two categories here. And you could kind of go in and try to adjust the categories if you want to group your categories differently. But let's first go into here. Federal taxes that were withheld. This is what this is what we, we withheld. And the portion that we owe for the employer taxes that we have to then pay at some future point after the payroll is processed to the government. So that's the general, that's the general idea with the payroll. Now remember, if you had a third party payroll provider doing the taxes, and then you would want to enter the information into the system, just possibly like one lump sum here, given their payroll report. So your financial statements are correct. You can even try to stay in a cash based system and try to wait till everything clears the bank be on a cash based system and record uh, record the, the payroll taxes and liabilities as expenses when you actually pay them and then make a period end adjustment for uh, financial reporting at the end of the month or the end of the year, possibly with the help of the CPA firm and your payroll provider periodically. If you, tr if you wanted to be a bookkeeper trying to automate everything on a cash based system, possibly with the bank feeds as much as possible, and then making a periodic adjustment. You don't have that option if you're processing payroll within QuickBooks because you need all this added data. All this information is necessary in order to generate the information that's needed from an HR perspective, as well as processing the checks, as well as creating the financial statements at the end of uh, the quarter and the year. Let's go to the tab to the right, right click and duplicate that tab. And then just note that we also have other payroll reports that are going to be generated now that we have payroll turned on. That's under the reports on the left hand side. And we can scroll down to the payroll reports. Payroll. Scroll down. So here's our employee reports. And then we have all these payroll reports down below. So there's a plethora of payroll uh, reports. Let's look at the payroll detail report. So open up the payroll detail. I've closed up the hamburger. So we've got the date range for, I, I just put the whole year, uh, January through December, 2023. Obviously we only have one uh, payroll period for the first month of operations. We've got our two employees. Notice that we can see this in terms of an employee by employee breakout. And we can also see it in terms of the gross amount. So this is similar to a report that you might get from like a third party payroll provider if you had this done by a third party provider that you can you can then use again to give your summary information for the financial reporting on either a paycheck by paycheck basis or a month end quarter end or a year end basis as you need as you need to be putting that into uh, the system for whatever your needs may be. Now, obviously, when you're processing payroll within the QuickBooks system, you can see all the added data that's going to accumulate up as we're tracking the information necessary for the processing of payroll, for issuing the stubs, for filling out uh, the, the reports. And at the end of the year, uh, you want to get everything entered as best you can for the payroll and try to not have a system where, you're, where you have errors when you're doing the data input. You'd rather not tinker around with something until you get it right with payroll, but rather get it right the first time, because oftentimes if something's not set up right, it's going to come to light like at the end of the year when you're really busy doing everything else. And that's uh, kind of an issue with payroll sometimes. So at the end of the year, of course, you're going to have to process all of the, the last 941, the 940, the W2s and the W3. And this information will be necessary, or this is the type of, type of information used by QuickBooks to help to populate those forms. And if you were in an audit or something like that, you would expect the payroll forms here to tie out to what's reflected on the financial statements to be able to tie out to what's reflected on the reporting forms, the 941s, the 940s, and the W-2 forms.